They say this is a big rich town. I just come from the poet's part. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Power After Hours, your favorite power podcast. I'm your host, Jeff J, joined by Chrissy Bree, too. And we're here to recap season four. Episode 7, You Lied to My Face. What's going on, Chrissy? Yay, man. Was, I mean, I, I, for a second, I was like, what do you mean I lied to your face? I forgot that was the name. Of... <laughs> I thought you were calling me out on something. That's how we banter so much. I don't ever, I, I always think you're up to something. But yeah, okay. That's the name of the episode. You are unreal. <laughs> Yo, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yo, man, I was just like, I thought something was about to pop off. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, nope. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going down that rabbit hole with you. Um, so, yo, tell me, what did you think about the episode overall? Hey, man, um, this was great. I think that we are finally getting to a point where a lot of the pieces that we've seen during the season are starting to align themselves and they're coming to fruition. Um, a lot of the predictions that our, you know, our listeners made, and we were like, "Nah, that's not happening," are happening. And so, <laughs> wait a minute, like, whoa, where did we get? How did we get here? Um, but all in all, I thought it was a solid episode. I feel like they are building a timeline for the next season to really focus on Tommy. And I really like that because he's such a strong character, but he's a, a strong character that we don't know a lot about. We only know what we've heard through Ghost. So I really like with how they're handling his character this season. Yeah, he's he's probably, for me, the most interesting character on the show. Yes. Cause he's he's unpredictable. He's yeah, that's really one of the biggest things. He he he's moody. He's unpredictable. Mm-hmm. He's ambitious. He he's somebody who who can't see past the criminal drug game, but he's still ambitious to do more and to be more. And yeah. he he's like a problem solver. All he does is just handle handle these problems, but. For all the things that he's gone through throughout the series, he's real important. So I do think it's smart to start fleshing out his storyline and building those little pieces together so that you have more intricate things that you could do with him. Uh, they, they, hopping around with this episode. So they, they finally pull the reveal that Teresi's his dad. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, for me, it was real anticlimactic because they they I, I it, it's a it's a term that that I, I I use when it comes to certain reveals like this. I feel like it's it was it was tacitly overt that mm-hmm. Teresi was his dad, and what I mean is that it was so obvious. It, they were they were so obvious in the indirect way that they revealed it if you if you didn't even watch power if you've just watched tv or read novels or have a general understanding of how stories go where if you look for certain clues you can piece things together i don't know how you came with any other conclusion definitive right lee that he was his, he was his dad that he wasn't right. his dad because i know that there was the other theory was that he knew his dad. Yeah, my theory was that he had actually killed his dad. And, I mean, you never know. We could That could still be in play. I don't know. I mean, he could just be saying, I, I don't, we don't know if that's actually, like, are we to believe Teresi? But his emotion seemed so real when he was telling Tommy that it's hard to not believe his story. Yeah, if, if, you, if, uh, if you had basic com- common sense, basic mm-hmm. comprehension, there's no way you didn't know. it. it the the and to make it the end of the episode, it all the melodrama and and the way the, they made it like a cliffhanger, but we've been off that cliff. Right. We've been fell. <laughs> we yeah. we we already dis- we've been we we hit the ground by now. There, yeah. There's no reason to make that a cliffhanger, and I don't know. I don't know what they could have done. Some suggestions I had was they they I. I think they could have went a different direction mm. to to misdirect that he was okay. his dad. Like okay. the f- the first time he's asking about Tommy, he's like, "His last name's Egan." Okay, find out more information for me. 
Right. Why would you want to know more information about Tommy specifically? Oh, Is the mother's last dad. name Egan? Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. okay. That's why. Because he, 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 he said his dad was dead. So he, his mom probably, and, and, and this is one of the main issues that a lot of people have with power, and I do too. Mm-hmm. We assume a lot. And we, we fill in the blanks for a lot of the things that happen on the show due to general logic. For example, you just asked, is his mother's last name Egan? Yeah. I believe it. it is. It is on the show. But I'm assuming that he, she told Tommy that's her married name and her, okay. and her dad is dead. Tommy wouldn't Yeah, I mean, well, Tommy is dead. What you talking about, motherfucker? Tommy, the way Tommy talks, like, right. completely kills me. Like, I love his character, but... Um, I, we, I want to know more about what the mom has even told. And I, I'm assuming, because like you said, we really don't know. I'm assuming that we are going to find that out in the next episode. Because you know the first thing Tommy's going to do is he's going to go to his mother. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to. I, I like the, the way that Teresi confirmed that he was his dad. Yeah. Uh, well, he yes, was Tommy's telling, dad. Yes. Mm-hmm. When he started describing her, called her name. The redhead, you know, right. I've always had a thing for redheads. Right, and mm-hmm. called and said his her name, so that's when he knew that it was real. That part was good. I just don't think it that that reveal just didn't resonate with me, and I don't think it resonated with the fans. I wish I was watching it live to see the reaction on social media to yeah. to determine whether or not people were reacting the way they were reacting like they were like oh my god he he's his dad as opposed to all right they confirmed it that is his dad yeah and i really the problem with now is that i can't watch it live because as you know there's another show that trumps this one but it's like (laughs) it's frustrating (laughs) i watch it at eight o'clock i watch it before you know right an hour before it comes on and i never want to be that person um, that spoils an episode for anyone, you know, as we've done a podcast about that already. Um, I don't want to be that guy. So I always take a step back and I don't say anything until like after, you know, nine o'clock is over. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, I don't know what the, I w- I, I'm with you. I wish I could have seen the reaction. I think more so people loved the way Tommy reacted than the way the story was written, so to speak. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The way he reacted was great. He's perfect, man. Imagine if that reveal hit us harder with the way he no. reacted and us being no. clueless to it. He's come such a long way from season one. My God. I don't know who did his acting lessons after season one, but they deserve an award. Seriously. He's great. Yeah, he's very he's evolved. His character has evolved so much. Yeah. And it's 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 phenomenal. But he's that, the main character now, if you think about it. He has been because of Ghost being in jail, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, that 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 revealed to me they could have did they could have did a whole lot more, and I'm I'm a little I'm I'm actually a lot disappointed in that. Uh, so yeah, so we so that's one confirmation that we had. Next one was the whole. You know what's crazy? That I'm what's sorry. Up? You know what's crazy that you say that that wasn't like the best. Is that I didn't even remember that part of the episode, and that's pretty sad. Uh, now that you're saying that's the first thing we talked about, I was like, wait a minute, that happened? I didn't. So that tells that just confirms what you're saying about it because I that was not the best part of the episode to me. I didn't think that's what we were going to lead with. So you just basically can, I'm confirming what you're saying here. Right. I, I'm, just, I'm just hopping around because there was a lot. This episode, a lot of the the what's been done in the dark came to light. Yes. All the lies, all the deceit, many of those things have the characters have had to confront. Mm-hmm. And a lot of information that the fans had and, and everybody who's been watching, the characters start to find out. Mm-hmm. So that that's one thing that's been interesting about this episode. Because if you think about it, <laughs> the scene where Ghost and Tommy are talking about the fact that they, they did ma- majorly stupid things. Ghost kills a U.S. Marshal in jail. Tommy kills a... <laughs> A, a, a homeland security agent in his lawyer's house. Crazy, and, crazy. And, and, and they, 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 they know. They both know they have to do something to get out of it. They have to, they have to make things right. For Ghost, for for him, it's 
you call Teresi, please. I don't know why. Just call call Teresi. Yeah. And for 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 on Tommy's end, it's ghost tracking Proctor, seeing what he knows, seeing because they don't have the tape. They don't know what was done with the body. So they're completely liable at this point. And at Proctor's mercy, if he was to flip, they would be done. So Ghost has to either take care of Proctor or ensure that Proctor took care of all that evidence. So, so that, once again, information that we had that they're finally figuring out. And just another thing on the Tommy Tommy's dad reveal. Even Ghost tipped it one episode, if I'm not mistaken, where when he when dude kept asking him to tell Tommy to call him. That that's the most heavy handed part of this yeah. whole saga. I want Tommy Egan to call me. I want Tommy Egan to call me. Why? Why, Why? motherfucker? Why? And he had made a, a Ghost had made a slick comment like you yo you know his da- you his daddy or something. Mm-hmm. And he said something like that. Okay, you might as well write it on our forehead. <laughs> write it on it's his like forehead. They were, slapped, they were just kept, it's like poking the bear. You know right. what I mean? It's like, come on. Like, we know what's going to happen. Just give it to us already. Give us the give script. It. Give us yeah. the script. Send us cliff notes. It's yeah. like, do we, are they stretching it because they don't have enough content for the whole season? Like, what are we doing here? We don't, I feel like a lot of p- portions of these episodes have been filler and it's been a lot frustrating. <laughs> Like, yeah. just give me a solid episode like y'all have been doing the past couple seasons, and I'm good. But I don't need all these little moments like you're saying, you know, something like that. I don't need that. Just give me the story already. Well, speaking of the length of the episodes and whether or not they were cramming stuff in or they were hindered at all, you have you been seeing the news about 50 Cent lashing out at Stars? Um, no. So apparently he, well, not even apparently, he went on a, um, he, 50 Cent, I think last week, went on a rant about, about power and oh. was basically, <laughs> sorry, uh, he, he yeah. went on a rant, he went on a rant about power where he was, uh, he was talking about the episodes and saying how, you don't even support, you don't support you, the best show on on your network, I'm going to take it elsewhere. Hold on, let me see if I can pull this up without. This okay. is great, Jeff. I mean, I feel like this is real. People are getting the real side of the podcast. Right, right. right. Of course. Of course. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, all, it's all good. It's whatever. You know, y'all gonna get these two seconds of shit playing, whatever. Um, so he said it, it was a post on July 31st. I woke up feeling a little bit different about power this morning. If the biggest show on your network doesn't mean anything, what does your network mean, stars? I'm taking my towels to South Beach. Fuck this. Is so <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and the thing is, and the thing is, and this is this is uh, this is on um, BT's website where he he's he's lashing out. Now I'll just read the read because you haven't heard this yet. So I'll, I'll read this off for the first time. Okay. He was talking about, he posted this following last week's episode. And as we discussed, a lot of people had issues with the pacing of that episode. The fact that a lot of things felt like they got resolved. A lot of the storylines got tied up in a nice bow Mm -hmm. in a crash course kind of way where it's like, yo, it it seemed like it was what I call a fuck it episode where the writers just say, fuck it. We're going to, we're going to tie it up. It it happened a lot on the flash this season. It happened a lot on a, on a few other shows, but where you felt like the, the writers just said, yo, fuck it. Yo, just, just wrote in, just, just skip to the end of certain storylines and just said, yo, y'all figure it out. So the episode in question saw the deaths of two of the series' major characters, played by J.R. Ramirez and Anita Nani Rose, and was initially intended on being a two-part continuation to include more details. According to Power oh. showrunner Courtney Kemp, who seemed to share a similar frustration to 50, Stars was not on board with the decision to extend the episode order, forcing them to pack everything into one. Unfortunately, okay. Stars would not give us the, epi- the extra episode she told Entertainment Fe- Weekly. I asked them for 12 episodes for season four, and they would not do it. So because they would not do it, we had to make it one episode. Stars has yet to respond to 50 Cent and Kemp's remarks. So, Oh, I wonder if that's why we're getting what we're getting this season then. I I mean. So here's here's my thought on it. 
if I if I tell you <laughs> if 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 I tell you that I can only I you, you need ten dollars to buy something and I'm like yo well I you can I can only give you five and okay. you decide to pay for something pay for that item and put five dollars on a credit card and five dollars in your the cash that you had I'm okay. not liable for that credit that you got to pay back eventually. I mean, that's and, true. And, and, you know, because I told you you're only getting five dollars from me. So just because <laughs> I you go and buy a ten dollar item and put five on the credit card, don't expect me to pay that remaining five. Don't expect me to be liable for the interest. And I say that to say they knew they were only getting ten episodes. I don't think if we're talking about the timelines of the show and maybe if they had 12, they could roll into season five better, you know, you're getting a season five. Why not stretch out the episodes, put a plethora of right. cliffhangers in episode 10. And then we come back season five and you continue to extend the storyline. Right. You, you knew you were getting 10. If you try, if you try to write it as if you were getting 12 and then at the last moment they wouldn't budge on 12, so you said, fuck it, we're going to make episode six, episode six and seven, then that's on you. And that's on the, and, and we suffer as viewers because you can tell the, the whole, the whole Canaan story. Because I, from what I was hearing, I think the Tommy going to Chicago was supposed to be one episode. Oh. Tommy going to Chicago, that whole Tommy thing was supposed to be one episode. I think um, all the Ghost Canaan stuff was supposed to be an episode two. Okay. So maybe Tommy goes to Chicago, that's one episode. The whole Ghost Canaan Tariq thing, that was one episode. And then whatever episode nine would have been, would have been all the aftermath shit that we, we saw this episode. Okay. That's what that's what I'm uh, assuming, but you can't you can't write the episode like that and then say, "Well, we would have we would have did it if we got 12." You know what I'm saying? Like I I just think that that that's that's something that they had to account for on their own. So, I I get it. It's frustrating. You wanted more episodes, but right. to cram it all into one or to to cut the corners, do whatever you have to do to make it fit into 10 episodes it's showing and it's not showing in a good way mm, I, jeff i mean you broke that down perfectly brother i really i mean that you're you're 100 correct that it does fall a little bit on that side of things i just at this point i'm like we know stars there i like stars because they let you push the limit it's a lot like you know hbo and whatever this show would not make it on a normal network we all know that there's way too much that goes on on those. I mean, we open with a sex scene damn near every episode. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is a whole nother issue because I have seen literal um, riots from fans on social media about that. Some of the fans are actually really upset with these sex scenes. Um, what, what are they upset, upset about? They're saying that there doesn't need to be a sex scene every episode. Like, I'm not trying to watch soft porn. I'm trying to see a show that's normal. It doesn't need, you know what I mean? And I've seen a lot of the same complaints um, towards um, Issa Rae's show, Insecure, on HBO. Um, I, I don't, I, I mean, we are on a network that will allow you to do such. And you guys have to know that they're going to they're gonna push that because that's a strong part. You, you trying to tell me you don't have sex in your life? It's, I mean, who doesn't? So it's a real part of life. It's going to be on the show, but I don't understand people are so in uproar um, about it. They don't like how it's the sex scenes are done. They said it basically feels like we're watching porn. Well, I, it's funny. I haven't seen that as much as the, the raging debate that's been on social media about, especially Insecure that I've seen it, is the fact that we haven't seen any type of condom in three, in Not like a, a season, in concept. a season and change. And that's been a conversation that's been going down with power to, with a bunch of shows where all these people are having sex, blatant sex that we, yes. we see and we see how they're getting into the sex and, and how it's happening. But there's no condoms. There's no rappers. There's no discussion about it. There's no I mean, if it's a husband and wife, I get that. 
but a lot of these shows we're not dealing with husband and wife. Right. We're dealing with boyfriend, girlfriend. We're dealing with one night stands. And um, if you're going to, I, I don't know, I feel like we're in an age right now where a lot of people are easily, they're easily swayed by what they see. Um, we know that younger generations are watching this show. I mean, hell, if you're on Twitter, you can see there are teenagers watching this show. And if you have an opportunity to take a stance on something and you know your show is going to feature a lot of sex scenes, why not Why not put a condom there? Why not make that a focal point so that you can change the narrative? Yeah, change I think it. someone involved with the show, I'm, I'm too lazy to look up what his title is. I think he's a writer <laughs> or something like that on Instacure named Prentice Penny. He went on a Twitter rant where he basically uh, said that it's implied that the the um, it's implied that the characters are using condoms because 99 percent of the time people are using protection anyway. Actually, you know what? Let me not let me not do that because I don't want to I don't want to. You don't want to miss somebody on that. I'm paraphrasing. Because yeah. you know, like I said, I I, I completely admitted <laughs> that I was yeah. being lazy. But I wanna, I don't want to, um, I don't want to say it, and then it's like, oh, I didn't really, I didn't say it like that. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. For the I last, understand. for the yeah. last time, ninety nine percent of the show, our characters are protected. We get twenty eight minutes to tell a story. We use that to tell the story. We good. Um, that's one thing that that was like the end of his his rant on on the subject. Yeah. Uh, um, I really hope people can watch Insecure without asking if they use condoms. In the writers' room, we always assume that they do. And then somebody replied to yeah. them, "Really? Maybe y'all should rethink that." And then he says. Or assume the actors are responsible like most people are in real life. That comment right that's there deep. is wild irresponsible. Wild yeah, irresponsible. And when, okay. you're, and when you're speaking for a show, you have to understand that he's a showrunner for Insecure. So he's a showrunner. So here's my, here's my issue with that comment that like most people do. You are totally ignoring STD statistics teenage yep. pregnancy statistics yep. which have gone down but still occur every still statistic major, on st- st- on yeah. on sexually transmitted diseases and pregnancy that's been out there for decades people aren't i don't know he maybe he's not in the streets like that or or doesn't talk to people but yo you would be your mind would explode at the amount of unprotected sex that goes down out here. Or, or, and, and, is, and has, been, quite frankly, has been. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, yeah. where people are comfortable with it. Where it's, yeah, I, we don't use condoms. Or what? And this isn't husband and wife. These are boyfriend and girlfriend. These are kids in school. These are college kids where condoms are optional. When we grew up, the whole wrap it up campaign and when, yeah. when, when, you know, when AIDS was, was epidemic portions and MTV w- had a big part in, right. in, in changing that narrative. Right. Yeah. And, and we, it was pushed that <clears throat> safe sex is the way to go. And it was, it was prevalent. That was like a heavy campaign that was all mm-hmm. over the airwaves and it was embedded in us. Like, yo, the, the, even if you weren't, even if you if disregarded all of that, you can't say that you didn't know. But for him to assume to make that assumption yeah. that most people are, are practice safe sex and are um, yeah that most people practice safe sex that's just real irresponsible that's completely Very. irresponsible and I I say all of that to say for him to say you know ninety nine percent of the show because I saw him retweet somebody like. I mean, they don't show Issa sitting down for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day either. But it's safe to assume she eats. That's that's a so false irresponsible. Na- that, that's a false. That, like that's somebody. That's that's somebody who he retweeted or uh, quote tweeted. So here's my thing: Are you telling me that it breaks your story or elongates your story or damages the flow of your story if we see a condom wrapper, if we see the application, we see titties and ass and all of this? But we can't see 
dude putting a condom on. We can't see we 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 can't see a wrapper there. We can't see like a uh like a drawer where the condoms are because that's real life too. Well, you can't see uh, especially think about um and, and anybody who hasn't seen Insecure. I won't drop any spoilers yeah. or anything like that, but. If you know Issa Rae and the whole awkward black girl, she has an awkward ass sex scene, uh, as as awkward as only Issa Rae could be, right? And and her, her and the dude who's having sex, it's super awkward. So you're telling me that if dude was trying to look for a condom and he's like, it, he can't find it, he's tearing up his house. You telling me that wouldn't add to the show, and while also promoting safe sex. And I'm not, I'm, and I'm not one to get into people's shows like, yo, you need to push all of these narratives and stuff like that. But I think if you're going to show all this wild sex, it would be cool if, you know, if if that's part of the narrative that dude is is going up raw in in their partners or whatever, so be it. But I think it wouldn't take away from it. I agree with you a hundred percent. And I love that we actually got into talking about this. because I think that's a great, um, I think that's something that has not been discussed much in this type of form about these shows that we do watch. Yeah. The sex scenes are funny. Yeah. They're awesome. They're good to watch, but why are we not talking about the elephant in the room? Um, A lot of people aren't. And I'm, you know, I'm glad to be a part of a podcast that discuss things like that. Cause this is real life, man. They need to, they, somebody needs to change that narrative and I'm waiting to see the show that does it. Yeah. And like I said, we, I've joked about it for a minute, like with, especially with power. I'm I'm sure we brought that up before. Like, yo, ain't no type of condoms being used. Like this this must be an alternate reality where none of that stuff, but think about it. Holly did get pregnant. She did get pregnant. She did get pregnant. So that's one, one, one thing I'll give to power. Like they've showed consequences of all of this unprotected sex that they've, that these characters have been having. So, you know that that reckless nature of it i i get that where <clears throat> you we've at least seen that we've seen that impact and who knows maybe on insecure we're going to see that too who who knows but my my whole thing is is that if 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 we're talking about what happens in real life mm-hmm. yeah we don't see them eating but i have seen isa eat <laughs> Yeah, we don't. I don't see her. I don't see her eat every meal, but she damn sure talked about ordering some wings. I've seen Issa Rae eat before on the show. I've seen her characters eat before on the show. Have food, go to barbecues. I know it's implied that they've had meals. The same way it's implied that they had meals, we can imply that they have safe sex with more than just our imagination. They can Mm -hmm. put minor plot devices that won't throw off the rest of the show unless that's their aim to show that people are out here being reckless but if they're not going to bring that around in the story then what are we really doing right making assumptions right exactly (laughs) Which is one of the problems that I had with Power, where it's a lot of time these shows, they want us. And you can't spell out everything for people, right? You have to leave certain plot elements. and Well, not plot, but certain parts of shows, it's up to the viewer and and their imagination to to develop and to to fill in certain little blanks of what you think the mindset is of these characters. That's why they ask all those questions to the actors after shows. Like where where where's his mindset here? Like what what would Tommy do in this situation? Well, you know why would Sandoval be nervous every time he's going to kill somebody? Is it because he really isn't like that? Is it because he's just a nervous person in general, but he's still a stone cold killer? Like stuff like that. Where well, you have to also remember Lobos. Um, he wasn't he blackmailing him. So I I don't think he ever wanted to be in a situation where. He was that guy, which is why I think he is so nervous. He has become that guy, but he didn't. He didn't set out to be that way. Chrissy, it was rhetorical. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> but thank back, you for proving my point. Back to the. Uh, but you see, to- you see, you see how you filled you filled that in. But you 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 use items from the show. You, yeah. You, you unnecessarily answered and proved my point at the same time. Yo, you are dope. You're so dope. I mean, I do what I can. You All know what I mean? right. <laughs> <laughs> what? Saying, I, I just saying i just wanted to make that known no doubt no doubt so let, let's talk about the whole 
the DA part of this show where mm. Angela's going around to Donovan and she's trying to convince him that Ghost did not kill Greg Knox. As much mm. as they want him to, he didn't, and that is somebody on the inside. While Mock is just like, yo, one of y'all is going down and I'm doing the investigation and I'm not getting caught. So y'all better yeah. protect your neck. So S- Sandoval is the one who's pushing the Donovan angle while Mock is mm. trying to figure out everything else. So the big reveal with that is they they see the camera footage of Sandoval going upstairs yeah. where, where her, her uh, Angela and Donovan, they figure out, okay, before the cameras cut off, they, they caught Sandoval uh, going up the stairs. Upstairs. Right? Yeah. And so which is, which is funny because there's always been speculation about cameras are going to catch Sandoval. But mm-hmm. we all thought it was going to be, or a lot of the speculation was that it was going to be hidden cameras in Ghost Office. Yeah. But it was actually the main cameras in Truth, which I, which I, you know, which is crazy. I, I thought that I, and this is an assumption. I assumed he went upstairs after they cut the camera feed, mm-hmm. but he went up during the camera feed. What an idiot! That. that shows you how not together he is. So what did you, what did you think about that and that whole scene? I loved it because I felt the suspense building the entire time. At some point, I knew it was going to come back to Sandoval because he's pushing his own narrative in this thing, and nobody else really wants to go with it. Um, And I think Mock is finally at a point where now he is even starting to suspect Sandoval because he's not including him on anything. Sandoval is left in the dark, and he's making himself look guilty by the things that he's got in um, Donovan and what's the... What's the other guy's name? Sachs. The white guy. Sax. Sax, I'm sorry. He also showed up um, at Angela's apartment because now he feels like they think he did it. <laughs> so that scene was like, hilarious, by the way. Yeah, he's like, I didn't do it, yo. You got to clear me. So he's, you know, of all people for him to go to is the person that he has been slamming this entire time from the beginning. Right. He has been trying to undercut Angela. So I found it funny that when he's in hot water that he goes to her because he knows at the end of the day she is going to find out who killed Greg. Um, so now that they've got this footage and they can actually see Sandoval walking up the stairs, now they know who hid that gun. You don't have footage of him um, going, you know, that in there, but he's he did it. You know what I mean? Like, he absolutely went up the stairs. How is he going to explain that? How do you get out of that? Um, I think it's going to come to a point where they are building a case on Sandoval silently, um, and he's not going to have any way to get away with it if he survives this season without being in jail i'll be shocked well you can see that he's also trying to cover his tracks as best as possible and he's going after whoever he needs to go after he got the gun he was he was going to kill donovan but he wasn't home so he's trying to cover his tracks before the evidence points to him but one complaint that i did see about that reveal was Mm -hmm. the fact that it took seven episodes for somebody to look at that camera. Which is crazy to me. I still... And, and, see, and, these I, are the things that we're talking about. Right. And I thought about it, and I said to myself, is this a nitpick or is this a legitimate argument? As somebody who worked in compliance for a good portion of, of my career, I, I can't... I, I have to say that it's a legitimate argument that they took seven episodes to see this data now i'm not a fed i've never been a cop but in in any type of compliance work if you're reviewing evidence you're gonna have what's called a four eyes review where two different people review it to see to make sure all the evidence that you completely go through the evidence and you don't miss anything so i don't understand how multiple people did not review all this evidence and notice that he went upstairs. And this goes this goes back to us having to fill in certain things. So are we are we saying that cuz I know when they were viewing when we they were reviewing the um when Angela was viewing the the truth evidence in mm-hmm. Ghost's office where she saw that Ghost didn't plant the gun, that Sandoval the timestamps showed that Sandoval was the last person to review it. Mm-hmm. But if he reviewed all the the tapes 
he would have modified the tape so that it didn't show him going upstairs if he looked at it. Unless so, he didn't look at it. Unless he only, because they were only focused on inside of his office. So, right. And the only thing I can think of is that maybe they had such a hard on for, you know, St. Patrick is that they just wanted it to be him. So they just didn't even fully do their job because things were stacking up. They had the fingerprints. They had the gun. Um, so I'm just thinking that maybe, and it happens, maybe they were just completely clueless. How many cases have we seen in real life where this these type of situations happen and the person does get off or sometimes the person goes to jail? Yeah. So I mean, negligence. not to be heavy, but shit, look at freaking, what's his face? That, um, you know, it happens, every, I don't want to say any names. It happens every day. It happens every day. Right. So negligence by law enforcement officials. I get yeah. that cuz they why would they be looking at that if they didn't think that he planted a gun or anybody planted a gun cuz Donovan exactly. found it. So once he found it there was no reason to really look at that data. No reason. Unless you suspected somebody planted the gun. Exactly. And okay. that's that's the thing they didn't have any reason to suspect it until now. Okay. I I can I can accept that. I can accept that. I just I the minute the minute that planting ev- uh, uh, charge came up, maybe they just felt like see. But then the thing is, for me, it's it, it's I I don't know. Maybe maybe they could have did something where they tipped it towards yo. Has anybody checked blah 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 blah? And uh, and then uh, we get to this point, but this is something that we we are filling in because it's it's we don't know what what the what the right the um the evidence process was or them reviewing we don't know it but i i can't accept that's one thing i I will say i was on the fence but i can accept that that wasn't that wasn't the case where they they, they just looked at it but you know it either way i like how that part of the story is coming together because now it's a Mm -hmm. race between can they implicate sandoval versus can sandoval kill who he needs to kill and get out of it Cause he's and just you in see, too he deep. Tried. He he's, tried. Yeah, he's completely. Buddy, house. Yeah, and when that daughter showed up, he was done. He was completely he's so nervous. Sloppy. He's just like, yo, I gotta get the fuck out of here. I think he's gonna end up killing himself. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, that's a good. That's a great theory. I wouldn't be surprised at that either. If he's just like, if he's caught and he's just like, yo, fuck it, I'm done. But um, yeah, that's a that's a great that's a great theory to have. Uh, yeah, so I think he'll end up killing himself. So we we have, uh, you know, the, the reason why this episode's labeled "You Lied to My Face" is what Tariq said to Tasha when they finally came home after that whole Canaan ordeal, where mm-hmm. he's like, you know, you lied to me, you you didn't you didn't tell me all these things were happening, you lied directly to my face, and we we mm-hmm. see, you know, I know for weeks everybody's been like Tariq is a badass kid, and he is a badass kid who doesn't listen, yes, he right, is. but. I think we also have to remember where his character is coming from. His yeah. character is a teenager, raging hormones. And anybody who's forgotten, who who doesn't understand the the rebellious nature of teenagers, has forgot when they were a teenager themselves. Mm-hmm. Then you think about it. His whole life has been uprooted. His whole life has been a lie. Him and Rena, they they've they've come to realize now that they've been living in a fantasy world, and they ha- mm-hmm. they're handling it differently. Tariq, of course, has been exposed to way more of the other side because he had a dude who wanted to kill him and his dad yeah. training him to be a criminal and training him Got to him be like drugs. a badass even more and yeah. hooked him on lean, all of that. Yeah. So now so Tar- Tariq is at a point where he's, you know, he, he he's going through some things, but if you did, if you just found out that your dad is a, a killer, a drug dealer, and your mom was complicit in it, and this yeah. whole time you you thought that they just were rich and and wealthy, and it's you you figure out the true nature of what they've been doing, yeah, you might be a little, uh, you might be a little fucked up in the head, you know. He's you, pop- the bubble that he was living in has popped. It's it's popped. He's in his real world now. Everything is hitting him at one time. On top of that, he's on lean, so his his emotions are even more, you know, escalated. He's just going through so many different things right now. And while he's dealing with it on the negative side, Reyna is like, well, let's just go to this uh, boarding school. Let's get away. Then we don't have to think about this anymore. Right. 
Reyna just wants her brother back. And that's what I think that's the saddest part to me is to watch Reyna's innocence. Um, she doesn't, you know, she's like, well, what can you imagine if you, you know, you messed up and you told on dad, there'd be no more PlayStation, there'd be no more Xbox. You won't be living this lifestyle anymore. And I think Tariq is more so like, I don't care. I'd rather be in my truth than live in this lie. Yep. So to see both of their their sides of this as they're going through these moments, it, it's very telling to me. And I it's actually very believable because you will have that one child that is the innocent one and the one that is rebellious. You always are gonna have that. So I like how that storyline is playing out. I really just hope that somebody is able to get through to Tariq before they lose him for good. But I, I think the storyline is actually playing itself out for us to lose Reyna this season. Really? I think it's playing out in a sense that she feels the need to protect Tariq. Tariq is going to find himself in a messy situation. She is going to be there and maybe get hit in the crossfire. But I think it's setting us up for more of a Reyna loss than a Tariq loss. That would be wild. But I don't yeah. know if we've built up enough emotional capital with her to really feel that loss. But it I would still just would be because like... because it's a kid. I yeah. think you would because it's a kid. Yeah, that, that would probably be it. I, I, would, I would be... Uh, I'd be messed up. Yeah, it would take me up. back because even though we haven't had a lot of scenes with Reyna, she's still a kid who just wanted to be with her brother. And I think that's what they've been showing us these past few episodes. She just wants her family back, man. The little girl just wants her family. And that's just so sad to me that the one thing she wants, she can't get. She can't get. Her mom and dad are never going to be her mom and dad again. They're not going to be the the season one Tasha and Ghost. They just won't. That and if you notice, Tasha has been calling him Ghost at the house, which further proves my point from our first podcast about why she told the kids to not call him Ghost. Because she does call him Ghost in the house. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. She does. Yeah. And she's been calling him Ghost for the majority of the season now. Yeah. In the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you 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 got that one. Yeah. Um, what what do you think about this uh, the Tasha and Silver angle? I I don't like it. I um I'm not sure why they forced that upon us. I don't even feel like they built that up properly. Um, I mean, one episode he's helping them, and the next episode they have googly eyes for each other. Like it just it didn't build right. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we needed more episodes, more interactions of them falling for each other before it just became a full blown love fest. Like, I don't get it. Maybe because Tasha is so vulnerable right now um, that she falls for whatever is in her path, but I don't like it. I don't, I don't see why they felt the need to do that. Well, I'll stick by my original claim when remember uh, once again, shout out to Michelle. And she said, do you see a love interest between Tosh and Silver? And I said, mm-hmm. fuck out of here. Yeah, <laughs> man. It doesn't that make that's sense. Gonna happen. I think that'd be very sensationalized. It would come out of nowhere. And now we're here. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not... If they showed a little bit... Once again, I think this is another rushed situation. Because yeah. she went, they went from just talking about business to in two episodes, and maybe it's over the course of a couple of weeks, mm-hmm. now all of a sudden she, she's going after him. And I, I'm not, like I'm not really, four. right. I'm not really, I'm not really too fond of it. I think it's been sensationalized a little bit and it, and it's, it's very, it's very, very rushed. Also, I just find it crazy uh, how Tasha, like the two trysts that Tasha had has been <laughs> with people on ghost payroll. Sean yep. and, and Sean is driver. <laughs> and Silver, his lawyer. And that's why a lot, I, I saw a lot of people having jokes about that <laughs> on social media, about that all the, all the men that she's dealt with has been the help. She's always, she's always uh, dealing with the help. But, that's um, true. I never even looked at it that way. That's very true. But, yeah, like, I, I just think that the buildup was cool. I just think it was too quick. I think it was too quick. Very quick. And it was just like, let it happen at the end of the season or something. Give us some episodes, man. Like, don't. No. I... Granted, Jeff, like, yeah, things happen. You meet somebody, you do what you do, but it's more of like a one night stand situation. They're building this up. Like, these two are about to have a, a real legit relationship. Like, I don't even get where that's coming from at all. And not for nothing, she got on 
Tasha got on Ghost about putting their business in jeopardy by dating a federal agent, but yeah. she's doing the same by dating the lawyer that just helped get your husband, your drug dealing husband, off of a murder case. Which is ridiculous. So I mean, she went and did the, the same thing with Simon. She told him not to make any decisions right. without her, and then she goes and does it to Simon. I, she's been making she just, a lot of ugh. bad decisions. Yeah, she's been man. She's making a lot of bad decisions, and it and it could come back to hit them in the head. So, you know, that that's something to watch as well. Speaking of Stern, uh, this whole angle with him in the real estate, it, it's 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 pretty crazy how he's he's using Ghost. And mm -hmm. and even with that, we even with that interview that he set up to clear his name, that whole scene where Silver was sending the signals to Tasha on how to answer certain questions like yeah. the re the wedding ring and why she stood by him and all of that, that was like pretty over dramatic. That yes. that, that that part was pretty over dramatic. But you could see it, to me, it's like they're going they're on opposite spectrums, Ghost and Tasha. Because their their whole interaction was was crazy. Like they yeah. they really had it out while <laughs> Raina, being a typical kid, uh, listening listening in on on them fighting. Where, um, you know, she she blames she blames Ghost for what what's happening with Tariq by saying he yeah. he destroyed the family. And Ghost tells her, "I didn't leave our family. I left you." Which was woo, when you talk about hitting below the belt. I was like, "Well, damn." <laughs> that, that, I was like, well, he's me. not lying. <laughs> <laughs> he's not lying. But Ghost is very selfish, and we've always said that about him. He doesn't make the he doesn't think about anybody else before he makes decisions, and all of that is coming back to haunt him right now. Yeah, that is once again everything coming to light. Tommy tells you know Ghost tells Tommy everything that's going on with Kanan. Tommy tells Ghost about the whole ransom text, and that's why Ghost confronts Tasha. Like they they really they really have it out. They really, yeah they really have it out. You know what I'm saying? And and, you and somehow see, Dre is still alive through it all. Yo, <laughs> yo, Dre is really the the MVP. the Lord the Lord Baelish of power. <laughs> oh, he's Littlefinger, yo. I don't I don't know how he's how he's 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 been making he's been making those moves behind the scenes and even when Tommy confronts the the Toros Locos and he, yeah. he confronts at the Jimenez are their leaders which is which is crazy cuz those were the same people that were implicated in Lobos's uh killing originally yeah. with the Aranya cards we find out that the Jimenez brothers are actually brother and sister which is a good twist which is a nice twist yeah like i like that, that part like of it like they're brutal they're fucking brutal. That they scene, do not care. That scene was horrible. Yo, they're not pl they're not playing with y'all. They're not. They're not. <laughs> Blood they're, on the baby's face, and she's like, "You see?" And I'm like, "Wait a minute! Don't let them see." <laughs> like yeah. what? And, and even seeing Tommy, and I and I get it, but how Tommy wants the retribution for what happened to to Absolutely. Julio. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And even with with him um, bumping up Dre to yo, Dre did not even wait. Yo, was he like, he like didn't the wait till the body was cold right. before he, didn't he tried wait. to get a but promotion. I, I feel him, man. The money, money don't stop. <laughs> the money don't Bruh. stop, right? But you, you think about his his different his different machinations. Like it, he 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 was able to to feign ignorance when Tommy came to him talking about, did you know about Canaan? Did you know yeah. about this? Did you know about that? And at the same time, play it like, "Yo, man, but where's Julio? <laughs> I don't know where. I don't know where Julio is." And, and it's crazy. And Tariq had a chance to say, "Yeah, Dre knew," and Tariq protected Dre. I was like, "Man, this shit is crazy." You see, I think he protected Dre because he Dre has probably been the one person that's kept it a hundred with him to his to his sure has. the whole time. So that's why he and he even told them like the, the he he wanted to hear from him. What the fuck was going on? And Dre, Dre is funny. Where when he was asking him all those questions about his fa his father and Tommy, he didn't really confirm. He but he, he like, didn't impl deny. He implicitly confirmed. Like he would just say, "Yo, man, you know you smarter than you. You smarter than you. A smart kid. You a smart kid. You already know what's up." So it's like, "Yo, I'm letting you decide. Like I'm con I'm confirming, but I'm not I'm not explicitly confirming that uh, that um." what you what you've heard is true you know i mean he 
he asked about his mom, Dre basically made that face like old dude in that meme that goes around like at the <laughs> at the rap battle. That's the face Dre made. He was like, well, I don't want to say yes, but yes. <laughs> it was crazy. Right. Crazy. So, so this Dre, show is nuts. Yo, think about it. They had this the plan. They they which is foul. Like the dudes from the Toro Uriel from the Locos, Toros Locos, set up some random dude for a kill on Julio. That didn't work. So they meet the Jimenez. Tommy makes all the demands for the ports for LA, which makes me think we're gonna see LA next season. Um yeah. you know, getting the block back. And he's really coming at the Jimenez which we see are brutal as fuck and that might even they they may be on the brink of war but to see them but to see him yeah and Tommy and the, my my thing with Tommy is Tommy is so matter of fact where he can talk his way he could talk his way in any room and he's just so blunt and matter of fact but he has a certain style about him like what he told <laughs> what he told I'm the, the one that kill <laughs> But he, yeah, well, first, not even the fact that he was like, yo, y'all owe me for killing my distro, and I killed Lobos. Where, where, where a lot of people don't know that they killed Lobos. They really That's killed true. Lobos. He thinks that Because everyone like, thought that he was dead in jail. Right. Yeah. And he was like, nah, man. We kill. But he was like, when you see him de- uh, formulating the thought in his face, he's like, yo, you owe me twice. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, he was saying, really it's like he plays it twice. out. He's such a good actor to the point that he can do that because it's like you believe, as he's saying, it's like you want to laugh, but it's like, well, he's right. You actually do owe him twice. He was like, because I killed Lobo. And they're like, no, that's where you're wrong. We had him hit in jail. And he was like, actually, let me tell you how Lobos was about to flip on y'all asses. And he was going to testify. Right, so right. let me tell you how you owe me twice in this matter. And they're like, we have to think about it. But at the end of the day, you really do owe him. You owe him. I, I love the analogy that he used when they shrugged off the fact that Julio died because Ghost is out of the game so that rendered the contract null and void, which I love the legalese in yeah. criminal activity, right? Like, well, yeah. he's out the game, so what's the problem? And he goes, when Dave Thomas died, we didn't see you, we didn't see Ronald McDonald riding on Wendy's. <laughs> she was like, do you get that? Yeah, and and I, I love like, it when Actually, I do. <laughs> she, said it, she said it in Spanish too, because that, that if you have any parents that are are not from the country, when somebody yeah. says some type of American saying, they would like you. You understand that? Like, you, what do you? Yeah, say? you all. They and always yeah, got a question. Kinda, like, wait I kind of, I kind of get it. But he's true. He's right. He's like, just because one person dies or leaves doesn't mean doesn't mean that you go ride out on the other one. Like, I <laughs> that I start when he said that, I busted out laughing. Like, he has the best lines. He, he does he, have to. He's just had he a great season, best. man. He this has, has been the season of Tommy. Season. Yeah, he, he's he's been one of the biggest bright spots of the season, and, and I agree. He's, he's uh, you know, he's um, he's shining. He's definitely shining. So we're on the brink of war with the Toros Locos. Uh, what do you think of uh, Lorenz Tate's cameo? Playing Tate, which is like basically old dude from Empire playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, you couldn't find another Puma, name other than Tate to give this man. Puma you Gooding couldn't. Jr. <laughs> Puma Gooding Jr. <laughs> we it, had a field day with yo, that name, by the way. What? If y'all listen to our old Empire podcast, <laughs> that episode where, where Cuba Gooding Jr.'s character was Puma, <laughs> holy shit. It, it took everything in my power to get through that episode. I think Jeff and I literally laughed for like five minutes on that podcast. We, you could, we just, li- the whole time, we just kept saying Puma. Um, like they cry couldn't call laughing. a better name. Like, like, <laughs> I could cry laughing now thinking about it, but I'm composing myself. <laughs> um, but they named him Tate and I'm like, bruh, there's so many names out there. Um, but I think this is going to be another situation. And when ghost is selfish and decides to make a, a, a decision on his own without consulting, um, Simon. And, you know, he said, well, it's a good thing. You're a silent partner. Um, <laughs> I don't know yet it, how good, um, Tate, motives are you really can't trust anybody on this show um he looks like a good guy right now um but we don't know what he's capable of he may know more than we know you know what i mean he could be somebody from back in the day that has a a freaking revenge plot we don't know anything so as of right now i like his character addition i think it's good to see lorenz tate um on my screen i've always loved him been obsessed with him i just wish they would have given him a different name yeah, yeah, that's just the fun. It's like Councilman Tate. I'm like, come on, man. what? Come on, man. what? 
there's like a trillion names in the world. It's like, like naming him Tate Lorenz. You just turn his name holy backwards. Holy shit. If they would have did that, I would have threw my phone. <laughs> I'd have threw my laptop off of a roof. It's been awesome. They should actually do that. They should take my suggestion. It's hilarious. All right. We got one one question. Um, one question before we get out of here. Or actually a statement from uh, from Sean. He goes, Tasha is a bird. Don't at me. Here's why. So let's go. <laughs> One, she'd rather her husband and father of three continue the dangerous occupation of selling drugs rather than become a legit businessman. Two, oh. yes, James is a cheater, no condoning, but Tasha's revenge lays are the lowest hanging fruit. James is driver and attorney. Three, when she finds out about Ghost and Angela, she actually encourages him to stay with Angela in order to maintain her lifestyle, which, let me remind you, is being married to a drug kingpin with three kids. <laughs> That's all He's I right. got. Love the show. Keep up the good work. So, Chrissy, is Tasha a bird? She's a bird. She's a bird. He's accurate. Everything he said was not a lie. So it's like, what do I, what am I supposed to say here? Like you even said it. She dates the help. She is dating the help. Now, mind you, this side of the help has money. So I'm not, he's not like he's destitute. You know, the attorney got a nice spot. His place looked nice. Um, but he's still the help, yo. Like she's, I feel like Tasha makes a lot of her decisions out of revenge. Um, whereas you know, ghost does them first. And she's like, well, I'm going to one up you. I'm going to do it too. She's like one of those people. And it's not cute by any means. So I agree. Yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, what more can I say? Right. Yeah, yeah, he's like, like, they, they're both, they're both fuck people in general. Yeah. Both shitty people. Uh, but but I, I do think it's interesting how they're going on opposite end of, ends of the spectrum where ghost is ghost wants to be a family man, but Tosh is like, eh, I don't think so. Cause even when he, he gave, he bought her another engagement ring, another ring and said, you know, you made me a better criminal, but yesterday right. during the interview, you made me a better man. Um, but, but and she's kind of like, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get this, this dick from silver though. So, I'm, I'm <laughs> but it's, it's interesting to see them go on those opposite ends of the spectrum. So yeah, they, 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 hopefully they clean stuff up and they make stuff happen. Um, you got anything else, Chrissy? No, man, that's it. One thing I do want to say before we take off, uh, be very, very careful on social media these next few days. Apparently, episodes of Power have leaked. Three episodes. So the rest of the season leaked? Yes. Wow. Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. I didn't know it was that bad. Yeah, wow. it's bad. Wow. Okay, so yeah. The, the, the Basically, the rest of the season of Power has leaked. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So yeah. just be very, very careful because I, I know a few of my people have already said that they've seen spoilers. Like people are putting clips. People are, are 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 saying what happens. And, so messy. And, and and I said I've said this a billion times. So let me say it a billion and one times. Stop being so fucking pressed to yeah. spoil shows, movies and events that happen in entertainment culture on social media. I don't mm. understand. Well, I, yeah, I, I will. I still will fail to understand why people want to be so blatantly rude. Because they want to be first. They like, want to have that. They want to get retweets. They want to be somebody. Okay. But it's That's, only, it's, it's only pissing people off. And, yeah, and, and the thing is, you know, you don't have friends in real life you can talk to. You don't mm. you don't have somewhere someone who 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 may have leaked the episode that you could talk to. I don't you think you're getting this shine and you're going to get a certain amount of prestige by talking about leaked episodes on social media, but you just look like the asshole that everybody hates. You're the kid in school who sits by themselves in the lunch table because nobody wants to talk to you because you are an asshole. Like it, it's just, it, it just really pisses me off because you got to experience something and you got to experience without any bias, without, without knowing what happens ahead of time. And you're, you got the privilege of those initial reactions that the writers and the actors wanted you to have from experiencing something for the first time. And you rob other fans of that when you go running to social media to post about things that aren't even out yet. People live their lives. They don't have the chance to watch every single thing when it happens. I do still agree that when something airs live, once it airs when it airs live, 
then it, everything it, it's open season. But yeah, even- and don't be that person that says uh, that that is frustrated that people are tweeting about something that's going on live, and you're mad you saw it. Well, bitch, you need to stay off social media. Yeah, get the those people off. piss me off more than anything. Right, but continue your point. Hey, hey guys, the spoilers said like, the person the who came on get at ten oh one on Twitter thinking that people ain't going to be live tweeting. Or even if you come on at 901, people are going to be live tweeting the show. But, yeah. You expect a million people to not tweet because your one person didn't watch? Get the fuck on. Yeah, I can't that, stand that, those people. That's not, oh. that's not happening, but that's not happening at all. But even even with the Saturday night, the Sunday morning, Saturday night leaks. Yeah. Now, well, it's not leaks, but they released it on the app. Even the show, mm-hmm. the showrunners, Courtney Kemp has said it, and people affiliated with the show have said, Listen, please do not spoil it on social media for the people, you know, for people who haven't watched it yet. It airs at nine o'clock on Sundays to everybody. If you if some people don't have the app, some people don't want to watch on the app. They want to watch on their TV. So please Mm -hmm. don't spoil it for people. And I think it's I think you do the show a disservice when you don't honor those those because even people there's people who live tweeted at midnight. I'm like, yo, come on, man. Like, what's the use? It's so frustrating. Yeah, people are watching. But, yo, it's, I remember people waking up Sunday morning and yeah. checking Instagram, the one where you can't filter it, and, yep. and seeing spoilers. And it's like, yo, what the fuck? I, I haven't even touched it yet. And I know there was a it's Game of Thrones, that last Game of Thrones episode leaks, and shout out to people who weren't leaking that shit. That, um, I still that didn't post it. anything about that. I didn't even want to look at anything. I just, I want to watch it in real time because I want to have that effect that I had watching it live with everybody on social media. Right. Yo, the way Twitter turned up in those last 10 minutes, yeah. that's what I want. It was awesome. That is what I want. Yeah, man. Like, I don't want people to be out here spoiling it for me. That's not what's good. Like, I actually have a friend, Gia, who has unfriended everybody on Facebook who even mentions power before 9 p.m. Like, she has unfriended family members. Like, she does not care. She has told people, do not let me catch you spoiling shit because I will leave you behind in the dust. And folks be hitting her up in her inbox like, yo, you so petty. And she's like, I don't fuck with you anymore. <laughs> like, she doesn't <laughs> care. Like, I, and I'm with her on that. Like, you just don't be that person, yo. Like, just chill out. Let everybody watch it. When it comes on live, after 9 o'clock hits, spoil whatever the fuck you want to spoil. But just a lot of people that want to watch it on their TVs, give them that privilege of doing that without you being a dick and spoiling it for everybody. I agree. I, I'm, I'm, that's, that's, I, I feel her. That might be a tad extreme, but she gave her rules. It's, nah, it's she her, it's her, she it's, set the rules, though. Yeah. She told people, don't do it, and they still did it. So, And, and, and I, just don't, I just don't get it. Think about it like this. Some of us, so think about all the people who have press access. There's a lot of people who watch episodes of your favorite shows weeks before you've seen it. Yeah. So if they went online and started spoiling shit, would you, would you still say, oh, well, guess I shouldn't have been on social media. Oh, well, uh, you know, I, I should have watched it. I should have become press so that I could watch it two or three weeks in advance, too. No, you would be pissed. The same way people review movies and see advanced screenings and don't yeah. come online and spoil it. Because it, that's what, another reason why they have embargoes sometimes just to prevent the to kind of mitigate that and just not have inf- information before it goes out but those movie critics don't spoil don't go on social media talking about major plot points it's just corny to me it's just real corny i, agree. I don't understand why people do like what what are you what do you have to gain other than being an asshole like i don't i don't i don't get yo i had somebody real quick i had somebody who i worked with who I, I was reading the Harry Potter books. This is years ago. I mm. was reading the Harry Potter books, right? Good books. And yeah. I she asked me what book I was on. Oh man, I and see I, where and this I is said, going. And I said, um, "What's what's the um, Order of the Phoenix?" Right. One of my favorites. I, yeah. I said, "I said, yo, I'm, oh, I'm reading Order of the Phoenix." Do you know that she she was like, "Yo, do you know that?" And she spoiled a major plot point. Oh. In Order of the Phoenix. Yo, I I, I can and, see it and, and be, up in you. I feel it. Yeah, being yeah. a black man in corporate America at the time, 
I had to temper myself because I didn't want to be labeled angry black man or anything like that or or make somebody uncomfortable, quote unquote. I didn't want to do any of that. But I burned a hole in her head. Yeah. And I'm and I looked at her and I just said, what makes you think that it's what what makes you think that? spoiling a book for someone is the right thing to do, especially at work. She was like, well, she was like, yeah, I'm the friend that spoils everything for my friends. Like before I'll go, I'll, I'll go spoil it right for them. Like, that's just what I do. And I just looked at her and I said, I don't think that you should do that with people at work. I don't think she should do that with people in general. That's not a friend, yo. Right, right. I was just like, I don't think that I, I don't think that you should do that at work, and I don't think that's the in, in general. I just said I just don't think that's a cool thing to do. I'm like I was just looking at her, like I can't day. remember the exact exact thing, but I know I basically conveyed in a polite, in, in, not in a polite, in a professional way that she was a fucking asshole for doing. Like yeah. yo, I looked at her, and I was like, yo, did I tell you that I didn't want to read it anymore? Did I tell you uh, that I was yo, I was sick. I was so sick. Like, yo, what made you think? And, and some people really become in, exhilarated yeah. by by seeing the the distress and despair on your face and all your hopes and dreams crushed. When they get a high from it, man, they they do get a high. So I understand why people are assholes. It's just yo, just same way Don't how they say. Guy. You have the right to free speech, but you you people also have the right to react, <laughs> you know, and and, 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 and treat you a, a certain way because of 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 what you say, um, or, or or you know, if you're being an asshole and people, and and, and you like, oh, I have the right to do that. Yeah, the consequences of you doing that, it, it, <laughs> you you're gonna have to deal with on your end. So yeah, I can't yeah. have friends like that. Yeah, that 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 just was. I still remember that shit to this day, and I just I. You know. I'm sorry, like I feel the need to apologize on behalf of the Potter community. That's fucked up. Dude, I'm sorry, dude. I was so pissed, but yeah. Long story short, watch out for the spoilers. People are assholes. Yeah, and I hope it doesn't get spoiled for anybody before, um, before you watch it. So. Yeah, man. Three episodes is a long time, though. People are dicks. Right. So yeah, three, we'll, three we'll see. Three more weeks. Three more weeks. So you know, be safe. On, be safe. Stay on strong. The, yeah. <laughs> be safe on the internet. In real life kids. streets. So <laughs> that does it for us. Thank you so much for listening. Nonstopculture.com slash subscribe for all your subscription needs. We're on iTunes. We're on everywhere that you can get podcasts. Nonstop Culture on all social media. If you want to reach out to us. Info at nonstopculture.com or power podcast at nonstopculture.com. If you have a question, be sure to hit us up. Leave us a five-star review on iTunes so that we Do can it. get ranked better. Wherever you want to leave it, we'll read it on air. Thank you so much in advance. And keep watching and keep listening. Shout out to Hip Hop Wired also. We do the uh, written reviews over there as well. Uh, so there, that's a, you can get it, uh, get it audio and get it on text. So uh, you get a different perspective from myself, and then you get more of the meat on this podcast. So shout out to Hip Hop Wired once again. And yes, that, yes. that does it for us. Uh, am I forgetting anything? I don't think nah, so. Nah, man, you wrapped that up beautifully. I, I got it. Okay, cool. So until next time, we'll catch you later. Peace. Peace.